That's the the, the public taxpayers' two Na Nancy, two cents. No, no, just for a second. Let just let me say that. Put this on the table, because I gotta give, give you folks a chance to say something too. And that is okay. You're, we've just heard that you've got a business model that is not viable without major subsidization. Right. That's an issue. Right. Okay? That's news for everybody because mm -hmm. we all think it's a lucrative business. So that's on the table for having to be reviewed at some point. Okay? Mm -hmm. Probably soon. Um, you've got the other issue in that you've got drug prices going up. You've got people who need more drugs on the formulary. Right? The need isn't going to go away. Are you suggesting at some point it would be better to have, like you're talking about, these dispensing machines uh, giving you your drug, you put you're, it in? Are, are you serious? Or, no, of course no, not. I'm, okay, of course okay not. so that's, let, that's one thing people are hearing. Or, um, I mean, the other, God forbid people are going to the internet for their drugs for, for, for pricing, right? What I need to hear from you is why that's not good. Where's the value well, added that we feel is, is coming from the pharmacy? Can, can I, no, just let him tell us okay. that, because that's what he has to finish. To go along with the model I was um, uh, discussing a little bit earlier, um, there are many services that go into these things. Aside okay. from us uh, checking for drug interactions with each prescription, aside from us checking for drug allergies, um, we have to double and triple check the medications. We have to call the physician to clear up discrepancies. We have to get repeats authorized. There's a lot of time that's gone into this uh, that's all included in this fee. And that's, for the, that's all in the $14. You know what, we have a caller from Newmarket. I believe it's Bob. Welcome to Focal Point, Bob. Do you have a question for anyone on the panel or just something, gen I was going to say generic. <laughs> Hold up, I can throw this out, Nancy, if you, if you don't mind. Please do. Um, I'm sitting here and I've been, I've been watching this uh, debate this is for the last 35 minutes and frankly this is um, I wasn't as annoyed 35 minutes ago as what I am right now and uh, what I hear this is uh, specifically from our government is that here we have a government this is that wants to dictate or this is strongly reduce uh, an industry and businesses and uh, their level of profitability I think that's audacious I just cannot respect this is a uh, a government this is that we've elected to make the comments there this is that uh, this industry or these businesses are too profitable let's look at this fact here the majority of these pharmacies are small businesses yes you've got the shoppers drug marts you've got the walmarts competing for the business you've got loblaws but this is the majority this is of the people in which me and my wife and our family that we take our prescription to that's a small business franchise and they provide a very valuable service because frankly we can't always get to our doctor and ask the little wee questions in which would cost the government a heck of a lot more money if i was wasting the time of my doctor this is to ask something that's as simple as do you think this affection uh, should i go to the doctor on this little affection or what type of rub do you have for something of this nature okay. here Thanks. i don't i don't like the aspects is that they're dictating their profitability and frankly if they're going to be so strong this is in trying to reduce the cost this is of that the government has to pay which i respect that mm -hmm. i think they should first have the courage to go after the where the real problem is and that's the pharmaceutical drug manufacturers the brand name manufacturers that consist of 75 percent of that cost and even the generics okay Bob, stop we're going after the small businesses thank you very much for your call i'm going to let uh greg yeah, take that. Uh -huh. well uh uh, it's an interesting perspective. Uh, uh, a caller who says that the government should not be mm -hmm. intervening to reduce the cost of drugs mm -hmm. for uh, ordinary Ontarians. Uh, it's interesting that virtually every editorialist in the province has said the government's going down the right road. The Heart and Stroke Foundation has said the government's going down the right road. The, on t the Canadian uh, Association of Retired People Yep. has said the government's going down the road. Virtually every interest group uh, that concerns itself with the very difficult issues of health care have said this is a reform that's necessary. What we have seen across Canada is other provinces have said Ontario's approach is one that we probably ought to uh, uh, imitate and put in place in other provinces. The fact is, the fact, just let, let me finish. Uh, the fact is that were we not to take these steps, right. it would have been irresponsible uh, because this government 
has got an overbearing obligation to deal with the cost of health care. Well, and uh, part of the cost of health care right. is what uh, uh, individuals and group plans pay for drugs. Well, and we've got to bring that down. 46 cents of every operating dollar, so that every dollar the, Canadian, the Ontario government is spending, is to health care. That's, that's not right. to drugs. Okay, that's, that's no, to health care. No. the total health care budget. Right. That's the total health Only 10% care. of that goes to pay for medication. And, and the part of the... And it has and not the increased, as the you line suggested. Item, the line item for the Ontario Drug Benefit Plan, which is all of this right. put together, right. is the one that is rising more quickly. That's not true as okay. well. Just the, I'm just a former minister of finance, and I'm pretty you, darn familiar looked, with these have figures. Have you looked at the budget, Greg? Please look at I the budget. I think he's looked at budget. Uh, I think yeah, that I think question is rather budget. insulting. I, would like, I would like to... Uh, I support Greg on the point that the prices of medication is rising. But and being, why do you think that being is? an ex... That's what he said. No, but okay. why do you think the price is going up? Because the, the brand name is allowed under the uh, Bill 102 to increase their prices but twice a year. Generic prices are going up Gen too. Generic, generic prices are, going are, are formula, fixed going down by the fixed. law. They are not allowed to increase it. So being the ex-finance minister, you think by tackling the problem of increasing the brand name prices, you have to reduce the prices of generic? This is one question. Number, qu number two question, this is basically a printout of the website of Ontario Drug Program. They are saying here that these are the medication, examples of the medication where we have uh, higher prices for generic in comparison to, and they are mentioning countries. As I just blow this up, increase the size here. What they are saying here that in April generic, we pay, as Ontario, we pay 50 cents. And this also, on the YouTube, with the Minister of Health is promoting it, and this is one slide saying in April, notice underneath, it's generic blood, blood pressure medication. Just for your surprise, Greg, the Ontario drug benefit, guess what, does not cover generic. And this is also it printed, this is printed from the formulary of the Ontario drug benefit program from the website, they're so showing here that the prices the government pay for the generic in Alapril is not available because the government went into what is called competitive agreement with the brand name and they pay only for the brand. So you tell me, is this is true or misleading? Okay, that's one question. The second question is, you says here that for Ranitidine, the government of Ontario is paying 40 cents and in comparison to the other countries like 7 cents and, and uh, 2 cents, so this is way too high. This is also printed from the Ontario Drug Benefit. Where, okay, so what you're saying is there's not enough generics on the... No, on the, no. I'm saying that the government is misleading. Apples apples exactly. So they said purpose. they are paying ranitidine for 40 cents on this sheet. Right. And their own formulary, which we go by that and they pay by that, they says here, amount paid by Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, 18 cents for ranitidine. Here. So if you compare it to the sheet they already put on their website, this is the cheapest. So... England, France, and Germany is less. So England, there's a lot France, of mess. Jerry, what we want to hear about is Ontario, and we'll be right back to take a final look at drug costs in Ontario. Join us. Welcome back to Focal Point in this last segment of the show. We're going to be taking a final look at the cost of delivering drugs in Ontario. It's going up, and part of the cost we're hearing is um, the dispensing and the delivery of the information all of us need to properly um, take that medication. Um, we have uh, a, a question on the table. Uh, before the break, Ben, you were asking a question of uh, Greg Sparrow. And I think he should get a chance to answer that. And then we'd like to go to a caller who's on the line waiting for his turn. Okay, so uh, uh, Ben, I think what you, the question, as you phrased it, is uh, why uh, begin with generics? Why not deal with uh, brand name pharmaceuticals? I don't disagree with that. Uh, you know, governments have to make choices. Uh, we've got an enormous amount of reform to do in our healthcare system. Mm. Uh, if we don't do that, Healthcare will bankrupt this province. If we don't make certain changes, if we don't transform the system within 
a decade or a decade, a decade and a half, healthcare will take up 70% of our operating budget.